social anxiety in artists, performers, and creators. In 2016, on this topic, neuroscientist Joseph Leduc said, Anxiety is the price we pay for the ability to imagine the future. This is a big statement, and I think it might be more than that. Anxiety is the ability to tell ourselves convincing stories, and some people tell more convincing stories than others. That is to say, artists. Social anxiety can manifest in many ways. More often than not, the root of that issue is the all-consuming part of the human condition that wonders, what do others really think of me? There are far more complexities to anxiety than that, of course, and it manifests in many ways. Some performers hate performing, some performers love performing, but are terrified to speak one-on-one -on -one to people. Some artists never share their work for fear of what other people will think. Some get discouraged by views or likes. In artists and performers lies a unique ability to see things others can't, to see possibilities that are both good and bad, to see the infinite potential of the universe. They say artists are like children that face the world, but never fully grew up enough to buy into it. The Show Must Go On is an initiative set forth by DJ starting from scratch to help shine a light on social and performance anxiety in artists, creators, and performers. The ability to face a crowd on a stage is not one that I relish. The story isn't about me. My professional name is DJ starting from scratch. I'm obviously a DJ. I've been doing it for like 30 years. Um, Music is basically my be all and end all. Everything I do kind of revolves around music, so um, that's really all I do. And uh, yeah, it's not an exciting life, it's just a musical life. Music has always been a driving force in my life. Uh, from as young as I can remember, my earliest recollections are of me getting excited because my mom would tell me we're going to one of my aunt's house and I knew she had the setup. <laughs> she had that setup, she had the turntable and she always had records, she had like super tramp and I can just remember going there, they'd be, they'd all be in the kitchen and I'd be sitting in front of her console with the headphones on listening to Breakfast in America. I had a few breaking points at the end of 2018 where I would either have gone down a really bad path or I had to make a change in my life. It was a tough decision, but basically I had my rock, I had a few rock bottom points that I never had before. Drink and play, drink and play, drink and play. Just different incidents because my therapy to myself was always drinking. I would drink and I would do my gigs and I would shake and I'd get nervous. And to me, it was just butterflies and drinking just kind of made everything go away. I just did that for literally 29 years. I was getting ridiculously drunk, progressively worse each and every time now. And, you know, I, I would play for four hours and not remember anything after the first hour. Uh, even if I was smashed, I'll still play. I won't remember anything. I won't even remember any songs I played, but I'll finish the night. I had to quit or it was eventually going to kill me. Um, so I quit cold turkey at the end of November and I made it public of my struggle with anxiety because I've been dealing with it for since I started my career. I got on the plane drunk and I just grabbed my phone. It's something I've never really done before and I just started typing. Short flight from Montreal. Came back, opened my phone and just messages and messages and are you going to kill yourself and what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And I was like, whoa, I actually forgot. That's how drunk I was. I forgot what I wrote. So I opened my phone again and I read it and I was like, whoa, okay. And I didn't want to change anything, so I read it again. And I was like, this is really how I felt. This was me, this was me at that time. And I just left it out there. Now knowing that I have anxiety, looking back, I can pinpoint so many times where it all makes sense to me now. I never knew what anxiety was. How many people that are struggling with anxiety that contacted me and are going through the same thing and just felt that they never had a place to talk about it. And people were throwing all these remedies and, and go see this person and go do this and go try this and go do this. And I just wanted to create an event that I wanted to go to basically is why this happened tonight. I have some real specific anxiety questions and anybody that knows the answers, I just, somebody talk on them. So. I just want somebody to explain to me the differences between anxiety, panic attacks, butterflies. Um, you 
know usually that it's anxiety because it's prolonged. It's usually prolonged worry, nerves. That's kind of more of anxiety. And if it lasts for a few weeks and you're seeing that it's lasting for a few weeks, it's definitely uh, anxiety versus nervousness happens uh, usually because of an event. Like we all were talking before coming up here about just being nervous. That actual attack feels kind of like that heart attack feeling, where you're feeling it in your chest, you're feeling that pain, but it comes and then it'll go. For those that are, you know, living with or dealing, having to, to be close to someone that suffers from anxiety and all these things, what's the best thing for a friend, a loved one to do? I mean, it could be as simple as Dwayne said, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What, what can someone do? Like, what's the best thing besides you know, a given amount of support, What's what else can somebody do? I think really as a friend or a loved one, it's about letting the person know that you're there to support them and, and be careful about when you approach them with that. So you want to make sure that it's a time when you think that they're probably not activated. Um, and just let them know, you know, it's normal. Everybody has anxiety. In fact, every animal has anxiety, even sea slugs. And it's just about figuring out how to move through it and increasing your ability to tolerate the distress that it brings on. And, and I'm here for you, and if you need me, let me know. Um, in North America, like, the way we are, you know, society tells us to be is, like, work, 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 and if you're not, like, a workforce, then, like, something's wrong with you. And I really just want to drive that home, too, is, like, find your community even at work. Like, find find those people that you feel safe with to say, like, I feel overwhelmed, I feel overworked, and um, that, that should be okay. Everything people were throwing at me, I pinpointed one person from each thing, and I assembled a panel, uh, you know, a big melting pot of, of possible remedies and possible therapies and put them on stage. I was already set, but they're making me question and almost make me doubt that I should do it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, aren't you scared about the game? A big game coming up. And I was a guy I never really liked to do media before the games because I, I just felt like I didn't want them to get in my head. It was something that I felt it was needed. You know, I put it out there. Originally, my thought was like 30, 40 people. And then we put it out there. And within two days, we had 300 RSVPs of, of the seats filled up in two days and I was like this is insane. I called it an education seminar because I just wanted people to hear options. Just get it out there for everybody to at least take in the knowledge and hopefully leave with one thing that that will work with them. Have some fresh you enjoy yourself. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you to the panel and thank you to each other one of you for coming out. If you or someone you know is dealing with social anxiety, performance anxiety, or another mental health issue, remember it's totally okay to ask for help. You can also check out the resources linked below.